a $4,000 Canon cinema lens versus a $350 Rokinon cinema lens. Let's put them head to head. All right, cinema prime lenses are one of those things that if you are a videographer, you eventually are gonna come into and then desperately, desperately wanna find a way to start incorporating these more and more into your products. I know a lot of you out there have RF and EF, uh, L glass for Canons, or you have some really great Sony lenses, uh, Leicas, whatever like that. But the thing is, all of these, all of those lenses are primarily designed principally for photography, and they just happen to be able to get some really good video. And I'll be honest, they're great. The autofocus is great, the sharpness is great, but sometimes you're going to want to get a cinema lens look on your project. And when it comes down to it, the lens is so, so critical in the look and feel of your project. Now, cinema lenses, let's start this off by saying right away, there's a subjective component to cinema lenses. They are beautiful, the quality is superb, but cinema lenses all have a very unique personality and language and flavor. And every lens, Zeiss CP3s are different than Canon's. And uh, RE Signature Primes have a very, very distinctive look than Cook's. All of these little paint brushes of light that you use really come through in a cinema lens. And so I think it's important for you as a filmmaker to start looking at cinema lenses. Now, this is one of my all time favorite cinema primes. And this is the Canon Cine E EF mount line of Primes. Now, this is a 24, and you can kind of look at it here. I'll, I'll, I'll put it up right here. You can see just how well marked and thought out and ergonomically balanced that thing is. The gears all turn super smooth. Uh, very, very easy to focus pull on this. Just a beautiful, beautiful lens. Uh, love the quality, love the characteristics, just love the subjective vibe of it. The problem you run into with this lens is that it's very expensive. This is a $4,000 lens. So if I wanted to get a six lens set of these, the 14, the 24, the 35, the 85, and the 135, that's gonna cost me over $20,000. And so not every reduction I have justifies that kind of expense, but I still wanted to get that kind of cinema prime look sometimes, even on some of my smaller budgets. And that's when I discovered the Rokinon Cinema Primes. Uh, I have a 24, 35, and 85 uh, of this and a 50, and I've really been using these for the last couple of years, and I'll be honest, these things are $350. They are dirt cheap, but I really, really like the look of them. Um, and just to give you kind of a reference, the six of these cost me over 20 grand. I can get six of these lenses for less than 2250, at least on B&H right now. So the prices on these things I mean, this thing is literally one-tenth of the cost of this. And my question was, how do they compare head to head? Oh, hey, and one more note about this. The way I'm testing this is I kind of see this. Almost every lens out there looks great at F8. I mean, even, even a $50 lens looks pretty good at F8. Where I really see you test the lens and push it is when you open it wide out. Both of these lenses are T1.5. So I'm gonna be doing these tests at their maximum aperture, because in theory, that is really where you should start to see the money difference between these two lenses. So, let's jump out there, get some tests, and compare these puppies face to face, head to head. All right, let's go. Okay, so here we are, and right off the bat, you know, I put these two images right here. I'm starting off the Canon uh, Cine 24 versus a uh, Rokinon Cine DS24. Uh, once again, these are all gonna be at 1.5 just to really push these lenses uh, to their breaking point, I guess. And the first thing you can notice right here is that both images look really nice. Uh, you know, there's not like a huge difference between these two lenses. Now, two things strike me right away as I look at this. The first is the bokeh. And if you look here, the Canon does have this really beautiful circular bokeh at 24.15. And the Rokinon has this sort of, uh, it's a little more football shaped. I think that's just from the, the shape of the blades in the iris. So the bokeh still works. It's kind of nice. It's kind of like almost a pseudo uh, anamorphic thing going on here, which is kind of interesting, but it is different. You definitely uh, see that difference. The other thing that I do notice between the Rokinon and the Canon just from the start is that it looks like the Canon's let in just a little more light. It's a little bit, just a hair brighter, maybe about a quarter stop brighter. 
And you'll also notice the contrast difference between these two lenses. Now, both of these are really good contrasts, but I just feel if you look here in the shadow side of Han Solo's face, it just looks like there's a little smoother, a uh, little less contrast over here versus over here. Now, when I zoom in, what I find is really interesting, if I come over here to the Canon, you know, you can see that really nice, smooth bokeh and the shadows fall off really, really nice. And what's good about this, this is why you want to go for a cinema lens on a digital camera. It's this creaminess that you get. It's still a digital lens or it's still a digital sensor, but the cinema lens kind of creams it out and takes some of that harder digital look on that. Now, if I come over to the Rokinon, I feel the Rokinon does a really good job with it too. Um, you can really see it's still smooth and creamy, maybe just a tad softer than the Canon, but they both do a really, really good job. And also if you look here in the bokeh, you will see uh, just a little bit more of a kind of a, a pattern here in the bokeh, whereas the Canon, while it has it, is just a little bit um, creamier. Now, if I jump here to 35, this is what I found to be an interesting uh, change too. On the 35 millimeter, there's actually a crop difference between the two lenses. Now, the Rokinon Cine DS actually has a tighter field of view than the Canon Cine. Now, between these two lenses, I'm going to trust the Canon, uh, just because it's a $4,000 lens versus a $350 lens. So it looks like the Rokinon Cine, even though it says it's a 35, it actually looks like it's probably closer to about a 42 or 38 or something like that. I don't know, but it looks a little closer. And once again, you can see the Canon lens is just a little bit brighter. Um, you can see the contrast difference. And once again, the bokeh. Um, now, you still have the round bokeh here in the Canon, but there's just a slight bit of a shape here. But once again, in the Rokinon, it's kind of one of their signature looks here, especially on those uh, wider ones, that you do have this football-shaped bokeh here, which is nice. But if I come in now at 200% again, you can see the Canon looks beautiful and creamy. And then when I come over here to the Rokinon, it looks beautiful and creamy too. It's a little more, there's a little dreamier touch, I think, to the Rokinon, but I think it holds up really well. And even if I come over here and look at some of these uh, marks and these digits, like on the color checker, it's still plenty crisp and sharp uh, as it is over here on the Canon. And then when I come to the 85, you'll see this is interesting too. Now the 85 actually had a farther on the Rokinon did not have as short a uh, focus distance as on the Canon, so I pulled the camera back. That's the difference in size. But if you look here, both of these cameras have just really, really nice, round, circular bokeh. That kind of football shape here is not apparent on the 85, but you do see a light difference between the two cameras. Um, definitely the Canon just lets in a little more light than the Rokinon. And when I jump in here, the other thing too, just once again, look at the contrast between them. I feel like the contrast is just a little, little smoother there on the Canon, Canon lenses. And, you know, when I come in here, you can really see, once again, that kind of smooth creaminess uh, on the Canon. You can see the, the letters here and this little chart maybe a little bit softer. That's just a little bit off. But then when I come over here, the Rokinon still looks really good. Um, really nice bokeh at this point. And look at that. I just think that looks really good too. If you compare the two of them, I guess I get the edge to Canon, but not by much. I think the Canon camera colors are a little bit warmer, but it's just really, really a close call. Okay, well, still lifes are all well and good, but at the end of the day, we need to look at these lenses with people and skin tones. I think that's one of those things that if you're using cinema lenses, hey, that's probably where you're gonna be using them a lot for. And so what I did here is because this is a manual focus lens, I can't autofocus on myself. I brought my partner, Bob, there. Say hello to Bob. Um, and basically what I did is I would focus on Bob and then try and stand beside him in the same focal plane and try and get this test here. Now, 1.5 is a really razor thin focal area. So uh, maybe a little bit soft at times. So that's, that's not Bob's fault. That's mine. So 
Let's go ahead and take a look here at these things side by side. Now, as you can see, once again, the lenses side by side look really, really uh, close. I mean, still great quality you're getting from both of the lenses. There are a couple things you'll notice here. Um, one, you do notice the bokeh in this situation is just a little bit more round than that little more football shape from the Rokinon. I do feel you definitely see the color difference, um, especially in this wider shot. There, you know, the Canons tend to have a little bit more of a warmth to them, uh, which is great for skin tones. And you can see that both in my skin tones here. And if you look here on the blue wall, the blue in the wall is just, there's a little more magenta back here than there is in the blue in the wall back here on the Rokinon. And that's a very characteristic thing of Canon cinema lenses. It's one of the reasons why people love them uh, for skin tones so much. Now, if I come in here to 200%, you know, what you can see is, you know, I don't have a super hard digital edge. Uh, looks really, really good. Um, but the Rokinon looks great too. I think that's a really, really good look. And here is actually something that really, really surprised me. If you come down to my T-shirt here, my life is measured in T-stops, you will actually see in the fine lines, because I'm slightly out of the focal range, just a tiny bit of chromatic aberration there. And if you come over here on the Rokinon, there is none. It's really, really clean. And I was actually really surprised that there was more chromatic aberration on the Canon Cine than there was on the Rokinon. You can see the 35 shows up really, really well. Uh, once again, you know, as I pause it, you can just see, I, I feel like the Canons, they let in just a little more light than the Rokinon. I feel like this is a true one five. And I just feel like this is, might be like, maybe like a, a, a one six maybe, but you can see the light difference there uh, on my skin tones. And when I zoom in here, if you look, both lenses, you know, have that really kind of creamy look that you're gonna to wanna to get on your skin tones. So I think both of them look really, really nice. But once again, look at this. If I come down here, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration here in my shirt. And if I slewed over here to the Rokinon, I don't have that in the fine lines of the shirt. I mean, look, there, there's that, and then there's that. And you can really, if I can try and get them almost in the same frame here, you can just see that slight telltale pink chromatic aberration here in the Canon that is not in the Rokinon. That really, really surprised me. I'm gonna jump up to the 50 so you can look at it on the 50. And in the 50, you know, once again, the contrast a little bit smoother here in the Canon Cine. A uh, little bit more, just a hair darker. I think once you get to 50 though, the bokeh, look at that, both of those bokehs are really, really nice. Really, really pretty. Um, if I jump down into 200% again, you can see the skin tones are really nice. Uh, nice and bright here on the Canon. Uh, nice and creamy on the Rokinon. I, I really think they're both good. But if you look again once here, you can see a little bit of chromatic aberration here around my beard and on my sleeve. And if you look here at this little light behind my shoulder, there's a tiny bit of chromatic aberration on the Canon that is not on the Rokinon. And if I pop into 400%, I'll just really emphasize this here. There's a little tiny bit of chromatic aberration here on my sleeve and shockingly, it's much, much, it's not really even there on the Rokinon. And I think you can see this here even on the still lives that I did. So if you look here on the chart, if I, if I jump down really tight into the Canon, you can see the part of my lens that is in focus, there's no chromatic aberration, but the parts that are softer, you do get a little chromatic aberration in there. Now, if I come over here to the Rokinon, you have it, but it's actually, uh, you do have chromatic aberration in the out of focus areas as well but it's just a little bit less pronounced there than it is 
in the canon, which means you have just a little more leeway for chromatic aberration. I was just very, very shocked. And now if I come back here to the 85, once again, I really think the 85, you do see a difference in the luminance value between the two lenses. Remember, these lenses were shot at exactly the same, right? But you can really see the difference here um, between it and there's just a little more light. And I think if you come up though, the skin still looks creamy and smooth on both of these lenses. And if you look, I mean, let's be honest, the uh, you can see a difference in the bokeh, but the Rokinon just looks great. I think it's got a nice kind of dreamy look to it. And the Canon is nice and creamy, but both of these lenses do a great job of taking off the digital edge of your picture. Now, the last test I wanted to do was I basically put up another still life and I just wanted to see what happened on the edge of the frames here for my lenses. So I basically took a care bear, put them on the edge of the frame. And then what I wanted to do is I just wanted to come in and look at the edge of each of these frames and kind of compare the sharpness at the edge. Because I think this is another area that you want to see how your lens performs. And if you look here, I'm starting off with an 85, just to, to look at the 85. And what I have here is both of the lenses look pretty good, but look at this. They both look really nice, but I would almost say in this situation, the Rokinon is toe to toe with the Canon lens as far as sharpness at the edge of the lens. Now, I also have just a tiny, tiny bit of chromatic aberration here on the line around my Care Bear. And you can see that little bit of chromatic aberration here as well. It's just, I wouldn't say one is better than the other. It's just a little more pronounced maybe on the Canon. Now, if I come to the other side, what I found really surprising was I actually feel you have chromatic aberration on both of them because we're just slightly off, but look at this. The Canon is nice and creamy, but look, I feel like the Rokinon is just a hair bit sharper at the edge of the frame. So once again, the Rokinon, which is one tenth of the cost, actually does a fantastic job of holding its sharpness to the edge of the frame, which I thought was just really awesome. Um, now, if I come here to the 50, I'll do the same thing here on the 50. I'm gonna jump over to 200%. And if you look at the 50 at 200%, I feel, and remember, I focus on the same place here, guys, that the Rokinon is just a hair bit sharper on the 50 as than the Canon. Uh, you know, now I'm pixel peeping here, guys. That's the other thing to remember, but I really feel that the Rokinon holds up great on the corners. And if I come to the other side, you know, you'll look, you know, the Canon is still nice and creamy, but if you want just pure sharpness, I really feel the edge of the Rokinon holds up slightly better than the Canon. And you know, guys, I, th I think what this just shows me is that, you know, chromatic aberration isn't everything. And, and one of the things about these Canon lenses is, remember I started this off by saying that cinema lenses are subjective. They're just an overall quality to it. And you can pixel peep these lenses uh, all day long, but some days there's just a point in what you feel the overall image feels like. And I think the Rokinons are great, but there's just something about the subjective quality to me about this Canon image, if I look at it as a whole and don't pixel peep it, that still appeals to me. So I'd still say the Canon wins, but man, the Rokinon really, really holds its own against this really, really nice cinema lens. Okay, so there you go. Really, really interesting test, huh? And I will be honest, I was actually completely blown away by the Rokinon cinema lenses. I did not expect these little $350 lenses to not only hold its own against the Canon cinema, but to actually beat it in chromatic aberration, and in some case, match it for sharpness when it was wide open. 100% shock, especially since these lenses are one tenth the money. Now, even though I love these lenses, there are some caveats. If you are a filmmaker who's looking for great look and don't have to break the bank, 
I would definitely recommend getting the cinema lenses from Rokinon. However, there are certain areas that the Rokinon still falls apart. And that is, as far as robust mechanical like engineering, the Canon cinema lenses, these things are designed for everyday shooting. And that makes a huge difference. If you are doing um, $20,000 plus productions and you're doing multiple ones a month, then it makes sense to get this simply because of how robust these lenses are. However, if you're a shooter that's shooting maybe one commercial a month and one commercial every couple months and want that cinema lens, then this Rokinon cinema lens is going to be great. They are much, much more fragile. I can tell you just from personal use, I've already broken a couple of these just from putting stuff in bag. They're very, very uh, much, much lighter constructed weight than even my Canon L lenses. So, and for $350, it's kind of what you expect. And the reality is you can actually break 10 of these before you equal the cost of one of these. So yeah, if you are a filmmaker looking for that to up your game, these are going to be a fantastic and great option. So, man, I was completely surprised by this. Um, really, really fun to put these two lenses together. Let me know your thoughts on what you think. And um, yeah, go out there, keep on shooting. If you have any questions, leave me a note down below. All right.